Welcome to Echo Assembly God's online service. I'm so glad you decided to join us today. Man, we are so excited about everything that God is doing in our church and our church family. And you're a part of that. And I'm glad you decided to show up today for Church Online. Man, we've got some exciting things happening in the church, some great ways to connect, get involved. Most importantly, though, we're getting into God's Word. We're looking through the book of Psalms. And today we're going to look at an incredible psalm. It's actually the longest psalm in the Bible. So that may give you a hint if you know what that is. If you don't, don't worry. Stay tuned because we're going to talk all about it. So I'm so glad you're here. Listen, we ask every week, do us a favor, fill out our digital connect card. It literally is the best way we can connect with, engage with each other. It helps us be better pastors to you. You have a prayer request, something happening in your life. You want some more information about something, let us know through that digital connect card. And also, since you're on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel already, would you do me another favor? Would you like and subscribe and like the video and give it a thumbs up and all those things that we can do to, to different things online because it really helps kind of enlarge our reach. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not an internet guy. I don't fully understand all the algorithms, but I do know that the more thumbs up, the more subscriptions we get, the more likes we got, the more, even the more that you comment on the videos, it makes a difference and more people get to see our service. As a matter of fact, I can't believe this, but there's a church in the Philippines using our online service, our, our preaching portion of our online service for their church service. I know. So if that's you folks, Welcome, we're glad you're with us. I, I'm kind of surprised you're using me and, and my teaching, but there's so many amazing pastors out there you could pick from, but I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here, and I'm glad that we have an opportunity to connect even online. So thanks for being a part of our service. Ben's gonna come lead us in a great song. My wife's gonna tell us some exciting things happening in different ways you can get involved. So let's get started. We believe that the Lord has called us to be a light to our community and we have several opportunities coming up in the next couple weeks to do just that. All of these ministries and events will be held at our Jackson Road campus unless otherwise noted. Every Wednesday night we have a Bible study from 7 to 8.30. Everyone is invited to come and attend this great night of fellowship and getting into God's Word together. Make sure to bring your Bible. Snacks and drinks are always provided. Our October free food distribution is happening next Tuesday, October 15th, which means we'll be packing up the food this Friday from 10 till 4. If you have any time either this Friday or next Tuesday, we would love to have you help for a few hours. This is one of the best ways we can meet tangible needs of the people in our community. Another opportunity we have to bless our community is with our very own Family Fun Fall Fest that's going to be held at our Jackson Road campus on Saturday, October 19th, from 10 till 2. We're going to have inflatables, face painting, pony rides, a petting zoo, free pumpkins, axe throwing, food, and so much more. Make sure to sign up today to help serve either in parking, with the food, or at our welcome table. This is an all hands on deck serve opportunity for our entire church, and it is the biggest outreach we do. One more serve opportunity. Our care team is a ministry that helps people in our church with meals or rides or in other areas. If you would like to be a part of it, let us know. As we are growing, we want to expand our ability to care for our church congregation. To sign up to serve at any of these outreaches or ministries um, or for more information, fill out our digital connect card and let us know where you want to serve or go to our church center app to sign up. And finally, we want to thank you for being faithful to the Lord in your giving. When we give God his tithe, it shows that we trust in him and that we understand everything we have comes from him. We have three easy ways to continue to give by mail, online through our church app, or through our website. All ways are secure. Thank you for partnering with us to make a difference in our community for Jesus. Let's pray, and then we're going to take some time to lift up the name of Jesus in worship. Father, we just thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for these great opportunities that you've placed before us. And we thank you, Lord, that we can be a light for you in our community. May you continue just to lead us and guide us. May we grow closer to you. We pray this in your holy and precious son's name. Amen.
For the last several weeks, we've been spending our time in the book of Psalms because Psalms talks about all the different things that we experience, all the different things that we go through in this life, and how we can walk through them with the Lord with us. It really is a, a, a journey through life as we go through the book of Psalms. And so today is no different. If you remember last week, we looked at Psalm 51 and talked about what it meant to have a heart of repentance before the Lord. We looked at King David and something that happened to him. Today, what we're going to do, we're going to be looking at Psalm 119. 
119. Now, Psalm 119 is a very interesting psalm in, in a variety of different ways. First of all, Psalm 119 is what's considered a wisdom psalm. It's a psalm that talks about, you guessed it, wisdom. And whenever you hear about wisdom in the Bible or a wise man, it always talks about someone who is following the Lord. So a wise man will be someone who's following the Lord. A foolish man is someone who is not following the Lord. If you're seeking wisdom, it talks about seeking wisdom from above. And this is a wisdom psalm that talks about the wisdom that we can have because of the Lord in our life and how we're to live our life for Him. And so that's what the psalm is going to talk about, how to live for the Lord and the power of living for the Lord. And you can see on the screen that there's a lot of different psalms that are wisdom psalms. So if this is one of those types of psalms that is it's very practical and if you like practical uh, scriptures these are great psalms to look through it's actually the longest uh, chapter in the bible as well it's an acrostic poem using the hebrew letters of the alphabet there's 22 hebrew letters in the alphabet and it starts with a and goes all the way down each of the letters and each of the sections have about eight scriptures within them or eight verses within them. So it's the longest passage. And it talks a lot about God's word. As a matter of fact, the whole theme of Psalm 119 is God's law. And it uses eight different words to describe the word of God. It calls it the law. It calls it the word. It calls it judgment, testimonies, commandments, statutes, precepts, and promises. And so as we look through this, we're going to see what we can learn about being wise in this world, living for the Lord, no matter what we go through. And there's three specific things we can learn from this psalm. The first thing is that it helps us to know, uh, navigate our feelings and emotions in a godly and healthy way. The, and create, the great thing is that as you read through these 176 verses in Psalm 119, what we see, it take, we see, it takes us through this whole spectrum of the human emotions and feelings that we all go through. It takes us from sadness to anxiety to grief to joy to peace to patience and all these in between. The highs of highs, the lows and lows and everything in between. The psalm gives us permission to be angry before the Lord. The psalm gives us permission to express ourselves, to be disgusted by the things happening in the, in the world and around us, to be upset at the things that are happening to us, everything that we feel, everything that we struggle with, every emotion that we have is actually in this psalm. And it gives us a beautiful example of how we can deal with these emotions, how we can navigate through our feelings in a really godly and healthy way. If we look through this scripture, you can see some of the different verses that, that talk about this. Now, I didn't pick all of them, but I picked some of them. And you can see here, Psalm 119.25 says, my soul clings to the dust. Psalm 28, uh, verse 28, my soul melts from heaviness. Have you ever felt like your soul, like your very heart was just clinging to dust? Like you were just so down and depressed? Or, or maybe that your, your soul melted from heaviness. Like you were feeling like the weight of the world on your shoulders. Maybe you were going through a situation and you felt like it all depended on you. And you were feeling that. You were feeling the stress and the anxiety of that. Maybe you were walking through a little depression at a time. It also says that my comfort and my affliction... When we're, we're, we're hurting, there's comfort there, right? Or how about you're my hiding place in my shield? What's that mean, you're my hiding place? Remember, this is a poem. So what, a, a hiding place would be a place that you feel secure. Have you ever felt secure? Have you ever felt safe? Have you ever felt a little afraid and then, and then you kind of go somewhere or go with somebody and now suddenly you don't feel as afraid anymore? That's what it's talking about, this idea of, of defeating fear in our life. Also, how about trouble and anguish overtaking me? Have you ever felt like you were in trouble? Ever felt anguished over something? Maybe you can't sleep, mind won't stop racing. Or how about I rise before the dawn and I cry for help? can't sleep, you get up early, man, God, I just need you to show up. You're, you're literally crying for help. You don't know what to do. Maybe you feel isolated, alone, abandoned. All these scriptures help us, even at the, in, in uh, verse 165, talks about this peace that we can have. And so throughout all the scripture, we see all of these things of these emotions and feelings because we know it's very hard in our life to deal with our emotions or our feelings, right? I, I, I always like to kind of say it this way. Let me show you this picture. This is a picture of a thermostat and a thermometer, right? A thermostat and a thermometer. And some of us deal with our emotions just like this. Some of us 
our, use our emotions as a thermostat. In other words, whatever we're feeling that day, that's the temperature we're at. If we're mad at the world, you ever wake up mad at the world? You wake, maybe you woke up mad at the world, so you're going to be angry. Man, you're setting this thing on 195, and you're going to be 195 degrees towards everybody. You, you live out your emotions like it's a thermostat. Really, what we're called to do is live out our emotions like a thermometer. In other words, a thermometer just tells you what's going on. If you think you have a fever, what do you do? You grab a thermometer, you say, let me check my temperature. Let me see what's going on. Can I tell you, when you look at your emotions as a thermometer and not a thermostat, it will change your perspective and change your attitude and help you in your relationships. You say, Mike, what do you mean? What I mean is this, your feelings and our emotions there are not necessarily evil or bad because God gave them to you. He created you with feelings. He created you with these emotions. Why? To be a thermometer in your life, to help you understand what's going on in your heart. But you know, well, as I do, if all you do is just rely on your heart, whatever you feel, whatever moment, you know, the world tells us to follow your heart, do whatever feels right to you. Well, if you do that, you're going to be led astray and you're going to find yourself suddenly in a place that you never expected yourself to be. Uh, there's scriptures that talk about this in our heart. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart's deceitful above all else and desperately wicked who can know it. It uses the word deceitful to describe our heart. What's our heart? Our heart is our desires and our emotions, the things that we feel. And if we're not careful, our heart will lead us astray. Look what Proverbs 28, 26 says. He who trusts in his own heart is a what? Is a fool. Remember I told you about the wise man and the foolish person? A fool is someone who doesn't follow God, just follows their heart, just lets their heart lead them wherever it may go. He goes, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered. Even in 1 John chapter 3, verse 20, John says, Says this. He says, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Even when our feelings and our emotions mislead us or condemn us or even betray us, God's knowledge, his truth is greater and more reliable than anything we feel. So when we talk about our feelings, if we allow our feelings to be a thermometer and allow that thermometer to tell us what's going on. So when you're feeling angry, you can begin to say, before you just lash out, you can begin to say, why am I feeling this way? Why am I suddenly anger, anger, uh, angry in this situation? Or maybe you're feeling stressed. Why am I feeling stressed in this situation? Or maybe you just get uh, depressed. Why am I feeling depressed in this situation? And what you find a lot of times is you begin to peel away that onion, peel away those layers of your feelings, usually a lot of times, I would say maybe most of the time, our feelings are attached to an insecurity or a fear that we have. And that insecurity and that fear that we have can only be taken care of by God's relate by our relationship with Jesus in our life. And, and that's why when we get into God's word, it helps us navigate our feelings and our thoughts. Look, look what it says here in Romans chapter 12. He says, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Don't be conceited. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, Live at peace with everybody. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You might be like, Mike, why are you showing me this scripture? Because this scripture is full of feelings and full of emotions, isn't it? Look at this, like, bless those who persecute you, someone who backstabs you, something who betrays you, somebody who makes fun of you because you're trying to follow Jesus. You're trying to live for God. You're just trying to do the best you can, and they're persecuting you. They're making fun of you, right? How does that make you feel? Uh, bless and do not curse them. <laughs> Don't curse at them. Don't call them bad names. Don't wish bad on them, right? Rejoice with those who rejoice. In other words, be happy with those who are happy. Mourn, mourn with those who mourn. Be sad with those who are, be, who are sad. Live in harmony with one another, right? Don't be proud, don't be prideful, but be walk in humbleness and humility. Don't consider yourself better than somebody else. Don't have an ego, don't be conceited. All of these are feelings and emotions that we all go through. And even here he goes, listen, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Listen, our emotions and feelings aren't supposed to be out front where they're leading us. No, Jesus leads us and we allow our emotions and feelings to help us understand what's going on inside of us so that we can live in such a way that we allow God to move in our life. 
Because if we're not careful and our emotions are controlling us, our feelings are controlling us, it's just going to lead us all over the world. We're going to be living this huge, dramatic roller coaster of a life, and we're not going to feel the steadiness, the security, and the power of God moving in our life. Listen, God is bigger than your feelings and emotions. It doesn't mean your emotions and your feelings are bad. No, your emotions and feelings are there to help you understand what's happening in your heart. And when we begin to understand what's happening to our heart and we begin to lay those things down before the Lord and we begin to understand what God's word says, it changes our life. The second thing that as we read through this psalm that we learn is simply this, is that it helps us to understand how important obedience is in our walk with the Lord. It, it is so important to be obey the law, the word that God has for us. And I think you this, this makes sense in any type of really strong relationship, right? Like in a marriage, a marriage is, is a commitment. The Bible calls it a covenant relationship. And in a marriage... You have to obey one another. You obey each other. You, you have to be faithful to one another. And you don't break that faithfulness. You don't break that obedience to one another. Why? Because obedience in our life is helping us to live for God. God's expecting obedience in our life. Even the, the first few verses of the psalm says, Blessed are those whose ways are blameless who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong, but follow his ways. And then he says this, you've laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. He's saying, listen, look, look at the, the words that he's using. He says, you walk in faithfulness to the Lord. You walk in obedience. You keep his statutes. You're seeking him. You've laid down precepts that were to be fully obeyed and I'm following your ways. It's this idea that we're called to a life of obedience before the Lord. Now, we're not called to a life of obedience because we have to. We're called to a life of obedience because we get to. And that's the difference in this type of, uh, with what we're talking about. Because it's not about I have to follow these rules and laws. No, it's I have a relationship with Jesus. I love him. And because I love him, obedience is naturally going to flow from that. Look at these scriptures. In James chapter 1, 22, he says, Do not merely listen to the word, word and so deceive yourself, but do what it says. James is telling us, listen, if all you do is hear the word and you don't live it out, you don't obey it, he goes, you're literally deceiving yourself. You think it's having an impact, but if you're not living it out, it's not. And even Jesus kind of set the premise of this about this love relationship. He said in John chapter 14, he goes, Jesus said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and he will continue, continue he will come to them and make our home with them. What is Jesus saying here? Jesus says, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. In other words, if you have love for another person in this relationship with Jesus, the natural outflow of love will be obedience to what he says. And, and, and you already live this out. I know the minute we say you have to be obedient, there's something inside of us. It's pride, it's ego, it's conceit, right? It's our feelings of these things. The heart's deceitful above all else. There's a part of us that cringe a little bit. There's a part of us that kind of, we kind of like, who are you to tell me what to do in my life, right? There is a part of that that happens. Well, maybe it doesn't happen in you. It sure happens in me. But if you think about it, when you love your wife, when you love your husband, you naturally obey them. This Just b before I came to church, my wife, she keeps all these water bottles downstairs in the basement. We've got, she goes to uh, BJ's and buys like 20 cases at a time. And so I have to take them all down. Should we put them on top of the, one at a time on top of the refrigerator? And then we put them in the refrigerator to make them cold because she only drinks bottled water. I don't know why. She won't drink tap water. She won't drink gallon. I have a gallon water I use. She won't do that. She just has to have bottled water. Gosh, I love her. <laughs> so she's like, hey, and I, and I hate moving all that water. She's like, hey, can you go downstairs and grab bottled water for me, put it in the fridge. Sure. And I went and did it. I obeyed her. Now, she didn't say, you love me, therefore you have to obey me. She didn't say, you're commanded to because of this. No, she said, hey, would you go do this for me? And I said, absolutely. Why? I obeyed what she asked me to do. Why? Because I love her. That's it. 
I love her, therefore I'm going to obey her. And I obey her all the time, just like she obeys me all the time. And it's not us giving rules and commands, it's just doing life together. Uh, think, think of if, you have ever, if you've had a child, then you understand this, right? Your little baby, two, three months old, your baby cries. And when your baby cries, your baby's saying three things. Your baby's saying either one, I've messed my, my diaper and you need to clean me right now. Or your baby is saying, I'm freaking starving and you need to feed me right now. Or your baby saying, I don't feel good and I want you to fix it right now. Now, you don't know what three of those things are when the baby's crying. But as soon as that baby cries, what do you do? Out of obedience to the baby crying, you immediately go take care of that baby. Out of whatever that baby needs, you immediately go take care of it. Why? Because you love it. It. You love him. You love her. You love your baby. You love your child. You do things now that in the, in the real life, in, in normal life, you probably wouldn't do. I know parents that are running crazy, taking their kids to every sports team and travel team and everything else. Why? Because they love their kids and they don't regret it. They do, they're not upset about it. It may frustrate them at time because that's normal, right? But they do it because they love their kids. They're obeying what their kids want in their life. Obedience is something that we do naturally. And what Jesus is saying, he's saying, listen, obedience is a sign that you really do love somebody, right? And Jesus is saying, if you really love me, then you're going to obey what I say. And he says, and when you do that, as you obey me, listen to what he says. He goes, as you obey my teachings, my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. He's saying, listen, as you live this life of obedience towards me, because you love me, we're going to come into your life and we're going to be with you. And all of a sudden, you're going to experience us in a powerful way. As we live out a life of obedience, God's power moves through us even more and more. And really, we can see this all throughout these scriptures here. Look at a couple of these uh, in Psalm 119, 1911 says, I've hidden your word of my heart that I may not sin against you. Uh, 6061, I will hurry without delay to do what? To obey your commands. Evil people try to drag me into sin, but I'm firmly anchored to your instructions. I've kept my feet from every evil path so I might obey your word. You can see the desire of obedience here. First one is saying, listen, I know your word and I'm keeping it in my heart so I'm not going to sin. In other words, I know what you told me, to, what you, how you want me to live, and I know how the world tells me to live, and I'm going to live the way you've called me to live because I put your word in my heart. Even in this one here, he goes like, I'm, I'm going to obey without delay. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to, is it really you? No, I'm just going to obey what you tell me. And he goes, there's people that are trying to drag me away. He says, but what? I'm so anchored in your word. I know that's wrong and I'm not going to go there. And even the last one, he says, listen, my feet are not even going to step foot on the path, right? I'm not going to allow myself to be drug away by what anybody says or tells me to do. I'm going to be obedient to you, Lord. I'm going to follow you. Why? Because when we're obedient to the Lord, God comes into our life and he begins to move in such a powerful way. Listen, God is looking for us to be obedient to him. There's an expectation that God has in our life to live for him and to be obedient if we call him our Lord and our Savior. Even in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, Paul says it this way. He goes, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. Paul says, listen, he goes, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of all God's done, in view of everything God's done for you. Remember we talked about mercy last week? Mercies that we don't get what we don't, what we don't deserve, right? I think I said that wrong. Mercy is we don't get what we deserve. So we deserve mercy. Hell, we deserve death, but we don't get that. That's mercy. Instead, we receive God's grace. And because of God's grace, we actually get Jesus instead of death. And so he goes, listen, in view of everything God has done, he goes, here's how I want you to live your life. Live your life. Offer your bodies. In other words, how you live as a living sacrifice. In other words, don't put yourself on an altar to be killed. No, live your life in a way that you're a, 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 you're 
every day of how you live, your obedience to the Lord is your act of worship to him. And he goes, this is pleasing. This is a true and pure worship. This is what worship really is. Living it for God every day, obeying him, being faithful to him. That's what true worship is. Worship just isn't going to church on Sunday morning, raising our hands, singing a couple songs, put some money in a plate, serving in a ministry. That's just not worship. Worship is every day, 24-7, 365, living for him. And he goes, and do not conform to the pattern of this world, but what? Be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind, and then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, perfect will. Hey, what, we're renewing our mind with what? Air? No, we're renewing our mind with God's word, just like Psalm 119 says. I've taken your word and I've placed it in my heart. I know your word, so I'm not going to let somebody distract me and take me down the wrong path. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to be obedient to you in my life. I want to be obedient. And then the next thing we can learn, the last thing we can learn, number three, is that it helps us to understand how powerful God's word is to bring life to us. Listen, God's word brings life. I cannot say that effectively, dramatically, powerfully enough. God's word brings life to us. God is on the side of life, and what God does is he brings life to us. Look at this Psalm 119.72. It says, the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. I think I read that gold hit over like $2,000 an ounce, something like that. I could be wrong. Don't take my, <laughs> this is not investing advice. It's, it's something like that. And silver's, you know, hit its high as well. Like if you had uh, thousands of gold and silver, you would be one of the richest people on the planet. And, and what the, the psalmist is saying, he's going, listen, he goes, the Lord, your law, your word, the words that come out of your mouth, they are more precious to me. They're better for me than all this money. Money can buy me stuff, but money can't create me a life that's going to be eternal. Only Jesus can do that. Even Jesus said in John chapter 10, 10, he said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. He was, I've come, why? That they may have life and have it to the fullest. Jesus is the embodiment of God's word. God's word is on the side of life. Jesus said, I didn't come to steal, to kill, destroy. I didn't come to steal anything from you. I didn't come to kill anything. I didn't come to destroy anything in your life. What I've done, come to do is to bring life to you. And he does that through God's word, through his precepts, through his instructions, through his promises, through his commands, through his law, everything that we've talked about. All those words that we said, there's eight different words in this psalm that talk about God's word. God's word brings life to us. And that's why it says to taste and see that the Lord is good. Because when you begin to live it out, it begins to change you and transform you. Listen, God wants to bring life to you. Look, look at these verses. Psalm 119, 30, 32 says, I run in the path of your commands for they've broadened my understanding. There's something about when you begin to live out God's word that you begin to, your understanding begins to expand. In other words, you begin to see things in a different light. I'll tell you what, when I first got saved, every time I looked at God's law, all I saw was don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But the more that I got into it, the more that I read God's word and I studied God's word and I started to learn about God's word, not just read God's word, but study it, learn it, and begin to apply it, I began to see, no, this is truth. No, this is going to help me bring peace in my life. This is going to give me true joy. This is going to begin to change my heart, change my perspective, change my attitude. And no matter what comes against me, I am now secure in the Lord. And it began to, I began to experience things in, in a different way. Why? Because I begin to see things differently. Listen, it's so amazing how we can get so stuck in a rut in our life and not see the life, the real life that God wants to bring to us. Even in verse 105, it says, your word is a what? It's a lamp. It's a light to my path. In other words, it's going to show you how to live. It's going to show you the right moves to make. It's going to show you the right choices. It's going to help you make the right decisions. Even in verse 130, it says, your words give light 
It gives understanding to the simple. In other words, it illuminates our life so we can really see what's important and we can really understand and understand how to love God and love people. God's word is so powerful, it changes who we are. As a matter of fact, if you remember, at the beginning of this message, I talked, we had this list of scripture, here it is, of all these different scriptures and these emotions that we go through and these feelings that we have, right? It says, my soul clings to dust. My soul melts from heaviness. And we talked about how maybe you felt that at times. I know I felt that at times, the weight of the world or comfort in my affliction or my security, my fear, right? Uh, trouble and anguish. Maybe you felt that before. We talked about all these things. Well, well, if you see these dot, dot, dots, I, I didn't finish the rest of this verse. I didn't finish each of these verses. Let me finish each of these verses. So verse 25 says, my soul clings to the dust. Here's the rest of that verse. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. God's word revives us. God's word are the electric paddles that shock us back into life, right? My soul clings to dust. I'm feeling, I'm grieving, I'm walking through death. But you know what? You're the one who's going to revive me. You're the one who's going to bring life to me. Uh, my soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Oh man, when I am heavy, when I'm feeling the weight of the world, I feel like I'm carrying everything, man. My strength is going to come from the Lord. And when I read God's word, that's where I learn that his word becomes my strength. That's when I learn that I can trust him and rely on him. He goes, you're, you, you're my comfort and my affliction for your word has, has given me life. When I'm in God's word, I realize I can be comforted. The God of all comfort's going to comfort me. The God of all comfort's going to comfort you. And then he's going to use you to help me so I don't feel alone and I don't feel isolated. How about this? You are my hiding place and my shield. I put my hope in your word. Listen, God, I don't have to fear because I'm in your hands. And you know where I learned that? In his word. Listen, when we get into God's word and we begin to study it and we begin to understand what it says about you and about me and how much God loves us and how much he cares about us and how much he's with us as we walk through trials and tribulations, just because he loves us doesn't mean we're not going to go through heartache. Just because he loves us doesn't mean we're not going to have trouble. Jesus himself said, in this world you will have trouble. But then he said, but take heart. I've overcome the world. The very one who's overcome the world, come overcome sin, death, and the evilness of this world, the very one who's done that lives inside of you and me. And we learn that in his word. That's why getting into God's word is so important and studying it, not just, not just reading it. Listen, I understand. Sometimes it's easy to read God's word and have no clue what you're reading. I get that. I understand that. I do. I used to be like that. And it takes time, and sometimes it takes practice, and sometimes it takes just saying no to other things and saying, okay, I'm going to go to that Wednesday night Bible study so I can understand God's word more. And listen, this is a big book, and don't look at this book and get overwhelmed. Don't do it. What's that? What's that um, I, don't know, I don't know if it's an old wise tale or woman's tale. What do they call that? Wives' tale? Is that what it is? Like? Or whatever. Like, I don't know. Chinese proverb? I don't know. Uh, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? You're like, Mike, that was a, a, a long way to get to, that, to get to that expression. Absolutely it was, right? It, it, just do it one bite at a time, a little bit at a time. Listen, my heart is I would rather you read two or three verses and think about it and meditate on, on it and say, okay, God, what is it that you're saying to me as I'm reading these verses here? And then think about it throughout the day. Then to read three chapters a day and not remember anything that you've read. I think this is so important. And the thing is, there's statistic after statistic that talks about that reading God's word more than four times a day changes your life completely. And that's what I want you to do. That's what Psalm 119 is all about. It's all about God's word. It's all about how God's word shows us how to navigate our feelings and our emotions. It, it's all about how God's word shows us how to live a life of obedience and to be faithful to him. And it also, God's word shows us this idea that God, Jesus wants to bring life to us. Oh, think about that. Listen, I don't know what you're struggling with today. I don't know what you're walking through. I don't know what's happening in your life, but I do know that God wants to bring life to you and he does it through his word. And listen, if you're not in his word, you're missing out on life. You're missing out on life. 
It would kind of be like if I told you, listen, you've got two doors and, and you can stay in the room you're in. You don't have to go through this, the, these two doors. But this room right here, I'm gonna give you the great, the, all the McDonald's hamburgers you want. If you go through that door over there, over there, I'm gonna give you all the Five Guy burgers you want. You ever have Five Guy burgers? They're a whole lot better than McDonald burgers, right? Or I say, you know what? If you go over here to this door, the door on the right, man, I've got the best steak, filet, pure, just the way you like it. It's gonna be amazing. Maybe it's prime rib for you. Maybe it's filet, I don't know. But you get a choice. You can stay where you are and just keep eating the McDonald's hamburgers. You can go get something just a little bit better on your own, or man, you could have this filet and really enjoy your burgers. What, what, what would you pick? Man, I would pick the steak. I'd pick the filet. I would be eating that in a heartbeat, right? I'd get my A1 sauce out, my salt, my pepper, all that. I'd be like, goodbye McDonald's, Jake's Burgers. You're good, but you're not as good as this filet that I'm about to eat. That's what I'm gonna eat. Man, that's the way it is with Jesus. When we go to him, it's filet all the time. Now listen, that's what he wants to bring in our life. Doesn't mean we don't go through troubles. It just means that's what he brings in our life. And listen, if you're struggling today, he wants to bring life to you. Jesus didn't come to steal, to kill, destroy. The, the, the enemy wants to do that in your life. Jesus came to bring life to you and to bring a life that's good, better than you could ever imagine. Imagine just, just, just think of the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy, and peace and patience, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, all those things, man. We long for those things. Those are the type of things in our life that go deep into our heart and begin to deal with our fears and our insecurities in those areas we feel like we're never going to be loved, in those areas where we feel like nobody cares about us, in those areas where we feel abandoned or rejected, though things of the Lord begin to move in those areas. And we can hold on to those areas, or we can let them go and let the Lord begin to move in them and to bring life to us. Man, I, that's why our, our mission statement is leading people to uh, Jesus who transforms our life. Get life transformation. What's he do? He brings life to us. I'm praying for you. I love you. We always say if there's anything we can do to serve you, would you please let us know? Let me say a prayer, a blessing over your life. So Father, I thank you for all that you're doing in our life today. I thank you, Lord, for who you are. And I thank you for your blessings in our life. Those that we recognize and Lord, the blessings that we don't recognize and those times that we take things for granted. Lord, I pray a blessing upon each and every person, every family. Lord, continue to help them. Lord, I pray as, as we read through Psalm 119 and we read about the power of your word, that you would allow us, Lord God, to be obedient to your word, to be faithful to your word. And Lord God, you allow us to get into it and study it. And Lord, you would do everything that this scripture, that this, this chapter talks about what your word does in our life. Touch us, move in our lives, Lord God. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. Well, listen, thanks for being a part of our service today. Listen, if you're around in the area on the 19th, you're local, we'd love to have you jump, jump in, help us at our Family Fun Fall Fest. It's going to be incredible. We actually have uh, live music. Uh, we actually have this guy who, who shows his Jeep. It's a 4x4 four four big lifted Jeep. He's going to be coming. Police fire. Just going to be a great time. It's all free. It doesn't cost anything. Love to have you come out. If you're local, we'd love to have you serve. Serve for a couple hours and then hang out with us the next couple hours and have a good time. So anyway, thanks for being with us. We love you so much. I hope you have an awesome week in the Lord.